Retired Lieutenant General Keith Huber, leading us in our pledge of allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, General. Um, I'd like to call on you to continue a tradition that our Board of Trustees has had since its beginning, and that's starting our meeting honoring our, our people of service to our country. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, today we've got a different approach uh, to the way that we attract military to this university, and I think it's a testimony as to the diversity and the richness of what this university offers. So, Caleb came here as a student in 2016 and paid for his undergraduate and received an undergraduate in economics in 2020. He then goes, gee, maybe I want to enlist in the Army, but before I do that, let me check out the ROTC program involving master's degrees. So he was provided a ROTC scholarship and achieved his Master's of Arts in Economics. You remember last time I introduced to a second lieutenant, Charity Savage, former basketball star, who had also received her master's degree with an ROTC scholarship and is now a second lieutenant. So this may why Caleb Watts became a commissioned second lieutenant in the active duty army. While he received his Master's of Arts degree, his sister received her undergraduate here, and in fact intends to come back for a graduate degree in pursuit of her CPA. And his mother returned to complete her degree and Caleb has been accepted as an economics PhD candidate. He'll deploy for a year initially to Korea at the beginning of next year. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce Second Lieutenant Caleb Watts. Um, I'll be brief. Thank you for having me here today. So firstly, I'd like to thank Lieutenant General Huber, uh, Dr. Miller, and the entire Daniel Center for sharing my story today. Um, it is minuscule compared to the successes and sacrifices of our veteran community here at MTSU. The Daniel Center works very hard to ensure that veterans and their families have an opportunity at this university, insofar as uh, Dr. Miller is going to be on my uh, committee for my dissertation. I'm also thankful for the Military Science Department Army ROTC program. I've learned many things and met many personnel who will continue to be my mentors and friends throughout life. Uh, due to the program's competency, I'm thankful for the opportunity to serve. Thank you. Thank you, General. I think we're in good hands when you have young people like that that want to serve. Uh, Provost, do you have any remarks? No, sir. I don't have any opening remarks either. That'll be a first. So, Mr. Floyd, would you call the roll, please? Yes. Trustee Baker. Trustee Boyd. Present. Trustee Cottle. Here. Trustee DeLay. Here. Trustee DeLay, because you are participating in this meeting electronically, in accordance with Tennessee Code Annotated Section 
108C3, there are two questions that will need to be answered for the record. First, are you able to hear me and the other trustees clearly so that you can participate in this meeting? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Second, are other individuals in the room with you? If so, please identify them. No, <clears throat> no sir. The minutes will reflect that trustee delay is able to hear those present in this room and that no one is present with him. Trustee Freeman. Present. Trustee Jacobs. Here. Trustee Carboia. Here. Trustee Carboia, because you are participating in this meeting electronically in accordance with Tennessee Code Ante Section 8-44-108C3, there are two questions that will need to be answered for the record. First, are you able to hear me and the other trustees clearly so that you can participate in this meeting? Yes, I can. Second, are there other individuals in the room with you? If so, please identify them. There is no one with me. The minutes will reflect that Trustee Karboyak is able to hear those present in this room and that no one is present in the room with her. Chairman Smith? Here. And Trustee Wright? Here. Trustee Wright, because you are participating in this meeting electronically. Here. In accordance with Tennessee Code Annotate Section 8-44-108C3, there are two questions that will need to be answered for the record. First, are you able to hear me and the other trustees clearly so that you can participate in this meeting? Yes, I can hear you. And second, are there other individuals in the room with you? And if so, please identify them. No, no other individuals. The minutes will reflect that Trustee Wright is able to hear those present in this room and that no one is present with her. We have Trustee Jaimez. Chairman Smith, we have a quorum. Did you ask? Rick, were you asked? Yes. I was asleep during that period. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Uh, it's my duty now to get the minutes from our previous meeting approved. Do I have a motion on that? So moved. Motion's been made. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Comments, questions, revisions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? I apologize, Mr. Aye. Chairman, but we'll have to have Conductor a roll, roll call, call vote. Floyd, James. On our motions today, since we have others participating electronically. Thank you for reminding me. Go ahead and let's have a roll call vote. Trustee Boyd? Approved. Trustee Cottle? Approved. Trustee DeLay? Approved. Trustee Freeman? Approved. Trustee Jacobs? Approved. Chairman Smith? Approved. Trustee Karboyak? Approved. Trustee Wright? Approved. The motion carries. Thank you. Next, I'd like to ask Trustee Wright for a committee report and any and all action items from Academic Affairs Student Life. It will be tab two in your um, handout. Pam, floor is right. yours. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. The the Academic Affairs, Student Life, and Athletics Committee met on May 24, 2022. The committee approved the minutes from its March 15, 2022 meeting. Today, I would like to present three action items for the board's consideration. The first item considered by the committee was tenure and promotion candidates presented by Provost Mark Burns. Faculty members applied for tenure and our promotion in September 2021 and have been reviewed by their department chair, school director, 
department school committee, college committee, college dean, provost, and president, as stipulated by MDSU policy 204 tenure, 205 promotion of tenured and tenurable faculty and their respective college and department policies. The president and university provost recommend they be granted tenure and or promotion effective August 1, 2022. This committee unanimously approved 28 candidates recommended for tenure and 49 candidates for promotion. Then the next item before the committee was approval of the Joey A. Jacobs Chair of Excellence in Accounting Shareholder. MTSU Policy 800 General Personnel requires the approval of the President and the Board of Trustees for appointment of Chairs of Excellence. Mr. Jarrett Decker was recommended as the chairholder by the Dean, Provost, and President and was approved unanimously by this committee. His academic year salary will be $200,000. The last action item was approval of a new academic degree program, a Bachelor of Science in Cybersecurity, Cybersecurity, presented by Provost Mark Burns. The accordance with University Policy 251, approval of academic programs, <coughs> units, and modifications, all academic actions that require review and approval by THEC must be approved by the Board of Trustees. The committee unanimously approved the new degree program. Informational items before the committee included a report on applications and enrollment activity and a presentation on open education resources. So, Mr. Chairman and Trustees, materials outlining this committee's actions were made available for your, your, your review prior to this meeting and are in your board notebook. And that concludes my report. Th thank you. I'd like to make one comment. We kind of brushed over real fast the Chair of Excellence. Well, Joey gave over a million dollars and and it got matched by the state after lots of wrangling and hard politicking. So he gave over a million bucks. This was two or three years ago. How long ago? Yes, three, four. It was before the, you were on the board, before we had a board. Yes. But and parlayed that, of course, that's what he's done all his career is taking money and parlaying it. And he parlayed that million into two or three with state help using programs they have. So we kind of just went over that like it, <coughs> like it was just a, we've got a chair of excellence. Well, that's a big deal and it shows a tremendous commitment. And I think I want to make sure you're recognized for that. So I need a motion to... Um, to approve the action items. So moved. Motion been made. Is there a second? Second. Any any further comments, questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Again, I apologize, but we'll need to have oh, a, a roll you? call vote. Sure. <laughs> How about a roll call vote, Mr. <laughs> Chair? Uh, Trustee Boyd? Approved. Trustee Cottle? Approved. Trustee DeLay? Approved. Trustee Freeman? Approved. Trustee Jacobs? Approved. Chair Smith? Approved. Trustee Karboyak? Approved. Trustee Wright? Approved. Motion carries. Thank you. Next is committee report for audit and compliance. Trustee DeLay, please take the floor. Thank you, Chairman Smith. The Audit and Compliance Committee met on May 24, 2022. The committee approved the minutes from the March 15, 2022 meeting. At the meeting, there were no action items brought before the committee. Informational items included report of independence of the chief audit executive, results of external reviews, Tennessee Department of Health, Compliance and Ethics Office Monitoring Review Report issued March 1st, 2022, and the quarterly report 
results of internal audit reports. There were no findings or reportable issues. During the closing remarks, Provost Burns announced that Brenda Burkhart, Chief Audit Executive, was retiring on June 30th after 35 exemplary years of service to MTSU. Brenda was thanked for her service to the university. The public meeting of the committee adjourned and the committee went into executive session to discuss audit and investigations. Mr. Chairman and trustees, that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions for Chairman DeLay? Next is committee report for finance and personnel. Trustee Jacobs, please. Thank you, Chairman Smith. <clears throat> Let me begin by thanking Alan Thomas and his entire team uh, for the hard work that they've done over the summer and actually this whole year in putting this together. This is our most important uh, finance meeting for the year. Uh, he's done, he and his team did an outstanding job. And uh, Alan, thank you very much. The Finance and Personnel Committee met on May 24th, 2022. The committee approved the minutes from its March 15th, 2022 meeting. There were seven action items presented for consideration. <clears throat> The first action item before the committee was the approval of revisions to policy 641, student fees, incidental charges, and refunds in policy 730, campus crisis and emergency management. Revision to policy 641 related to updating the corporate partnership rate previously approved by the Board of Trustees and setting the tuition rate for dual enrollment to the maximum grant amount stipulated by the Tennessee Student Assistance Corporation each year. <clears throat> Revision to policy 730 reflected various changes to the University Emergencies Operation Plan, including the movement of the responsibility to the university's police department. The committee unanimously approved the revisions to policy 641 and 730. The next action item was a request for the approval of the capital outlay project submittal presented by Bill Waits, Assistant Vice President for Campus Planning. The proposed MTSU capital outlay, outlay request for fiscal year 223 through 224 is the new academic building project, which will provide an academic classroom, class lab, faculty and staff, office and support space for liberal arts departments and the Associated Center for Innovation and Leadership, History Museum and MTSU Archives and Exhibit Space. A 300 seat lecture hall is included in the scope of the work to host public lectures and other community events. The deadline for submitting capital outlay projects to THEC is Friday, August 26, 2022. <clears throat> the committee unanimously approved the capital outlay, outlay project submittal. The third action item was a request for approval of capital disclosures which was also presented by Bill Waits, Assistant Vice President for Campus Planning. MTSU plans to submit, to submit five projects as part of the fiscal year 2023-2024 capital budget request, which includes two new, th new athletic projects and a redisclosure of three previously disclosed projects. This committee unanimously approved the capital disclosures as presented. The fourth item was a request for approval of the capital maintenance project submittal presented by Joe Whitfield, Assistant Vice President for Facility Services. The request submittal to THEC will include capital maintenance requests for seven 
projects for fiscal year 2023-2024, totaling $15.8 million. Summary of capital maintenance project requests for additional four years, fiscal year 2024 through 2025 through fiscal year 2027-28. The committee unanimously approved the capital project submittal. The fifth action item was a request for approval of proposed tuition, fees, and housing rates that Mr. Thomas, Alan Thomas, Vice President for Business and Finance. For 2022-23, TEC approved the binding range for undergraduate in-state tuition and the combined undergraduate in-state tuition plus mandatory fees at 0%. This is in alignment with the governor's budget which stated that as a result of the appropriations to higher education, tuition slash fees at public institutions will remain flat for the upcoming fiscal year. The committee unanimously approved the staff's recommendation for a 0% increase in undergraduate tuition and fees, as well as a 0% increase in graduate and out-of-state tuition, a 3% increase in housing rates for next year was approved. <clears throat> You could use a Gatorade after all this. Uh, I noticed that I am more than 25% of the report. <laughs> okay. The next action item before the committee was a request for the approval of the compensation plan presented by Kathy Musselman, Assistant Vice President for Human Resources. The governor's budget provided partial funding of $4.6 million in recurring funding for our 4% salary pool. The estimated cost to fully fund a 4% pool for the university is $7.2 million. The following recommendation along with full funding of the salary pool were presented for approval. Increased salaries for employees below the 2022 poverty level, provide a 2% cost of living allowance increase with $1,000 minimum, Update current salary ranges from 2014-15 CUPA data to 2020-21 data and provide market adjustments. The committee unanimously approved the compensation plan as presented. Just speaking off the record, this was the toughest thing that Alan and his team had to do. The state gave them no ability to increase tuition, only gave them partial funding of the salaries and benefits. And Alan and his team, along with all the other departments, came up with a difference. And they're to be commended for that. We were able to give a salary pool and move up the data we use to benchmark by, uh, which is a huge accomplishment uh, during a very tough, tough time. The last action item for the committee was approval of the operating budgets presented by Vice President Thomas. The estimated budget is the final budget for the fiscal year and reflects adjustments needed for spring enrollment additional funding provided through state appropriations and other miscellaneous adjustments. The July budget is a base budget for the upcoming fiscal year and is based on a 0% tuition increase, no mandatory fee increases, and a stable enrollment. <clears throat> Salary and operating appropriate Appropriation increases approved by the General Assembly for 2022-23 have been reflected in the July budget. Vice President Thomas presented in both detail the 2021-22 estimated budget 
in the 2022-23 proposed budgets. Both budgets were unanimously approved by the committee. Mr. Chairman and trustees, I'm going to report that all seven action items were approved unanimously by the committee. Materials outlining these actions were made available for you, your review prior to this meeting and, in, and are contained in your board book. Mr. Chairman and fellow trustees, finally, this concludes my <laughs> report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. 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 Do I have, do I have further comments or questions? James, would you please call the roll? Vote. Trustee Boyd? Approved. Trustee Cottle? Approved. Trustee DeLay? Approved. Trustee Freeman? Approved. Trustee Jacobs? Approved. Chair Smith? Approved. Trustee Carboet? Approved. Trustee Wright? Approved. Motion carries. Thank you. Now's the time to, where we recognize Trustee Gabriella James for her service in the fifth Middle Tennessee State University trustee. She couldn't be with us today, but we want to express our appreciation for her role in representing the students of this outstanding school over the past year. That brings us to the next item, which is appointment of student representative. It's a one-year appointment. At this time, I'd like to call on Provost Byrne. Thank you, Chairman Smith. On behalf of President McPhee, I'd like to give you a summary of the selection process for our student trustee. This process was managed by the Office of Vice President for Student Affairs and the Student Government Association. Applications were submitted to the Student Government Association office. Once those applications were received, recipients were sent a confirmation email then the Student Government Association Executive Board reviewed the applications and selected applicants to be interviewed. Applicants were then notified that they'd been selected for an interview. After the interviews were conducted, the three finalists' applications were sent to the Office of the President. Then Dr. McPhee personally interviewed the top three applicants, and he now has a recommendation for your approval. Uh, Mr. Chairman and Trustees, it's my honor to recommend on behalf of the President, Mr. Andrew Drew Carpenter, as our next student trustee. Drew completed his undergraduate degree in May 2021 with a major in community and public health and a minor in music, and he's currently pursuing his graduate degree in business administration with a concentration in healthcare administration, and he anticipates graduation in August 2023. Academically, Drew's a high-achieving student, uh, excelling in the classroom. He's also been very active with his fraternity and in leadership roles on campus, including president of the Greek Honor Society, president of the MTSU Red Cross Club, president of the MTSU Ambassador Program, and he served as a Blue Elite tour guide. He'll be a terrific representative of our student body in his work with the trustees, so today I'm very pleased to represent or to introduce Mr. Andrew Carpenter. Drew is here somewhere I know. Drew, please stand up and be recognized. I think we need a motion to accept the, the so, recommendation. So, so Motion's been made. I have a second? Second. So second. All in favor? Excuse me, better have a roll call. Trustee Boyd? Approved. Trustee Cottle? Approved. Trustee DeLay? Approved. Trustee Freeman? Approved. Trustee Jacobs? Approved. Chair Smith? Approved. Trustee Karboyak? Approved. Trustee Wright? Approved. Motion carries. Congratulations and, and, and welcome. Thank you. We have a tradition of asking our student to be on any and every committee you'd like. And I would encourage you to be on all of them because hopefully we can learn something from you 
And if you don't learn something from us, then we're, we're not doing a very good job. Because around the table, there's lots of experience on a myriad of subjects. So we welcome you, and we invite student participation, and are, I'm thrilled to have you. The floor is yours if you'd like a few words. It's not necessary, but if you'd like to, now's a good time. Absolutely. Thank you all. Uh, again, my name is Drew Carpenter, and I'm pleased to be serving in the student trustee role with you the, the next year. Uh, you've already heard a brief uh, bit about me, but excited to be here. I think that my time here, both academically and as well as my involvement with the uh, campus community, I think will benefit me in this role. Likewise, I've had the opportunity to serve in a professional role the last year. I currently serve as the Director of Strategic Growth for Sigma Pi Fraternity, my collegiate fraternity here at MTSU. Uh, in that role, I've had the opportunity to travel and work with undergraduates at uni uh, universities across the country. Uh, and I think that that's going to certainly help me in this role, be able to bring that to the table and offer a, a varying perspective. Um, so, uh, again, thank you all for this opportunity. Uh, pleased to be here. Uh, I'm a passionate Blue Raider and looking forward to serving my community with this board. Thank you all. So you go by Drew? I do. If you would let Pat know, or our secretary either, which committees confirm that you want to be in them, because if, if you can't or don't want to, I don't want you to be recorded as absent when we have a committee meeting. Perfect. I can handle that. So you just tell them what you want to be on, and uh, our, our personal phone numbers are available if, uh, if you'd <laughs> like to discuss any subject out there. Yes, sir. Thank you. My favorite Gatorade is Orange Zero. So, Good knowledge. I look forward to the next meeting. <laughs> Just kidding, Drew. Just kidding. But where are you from? Originally East Tennessee, Kingsport. Sure. I moved here in 2017 for, uh, for my undergraduate coursework. They're getting ready to have a big race up there. <laughs> They are. They are. Familiar with it. Live about 20 minutes away. Well, thanks for agreeing and for seeking this. And we look forward to the next year. Provost Burns, do you, you have some closing um, or president's report? Yes, sir. Whatever? Yep. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. On behalf of President McPhee, I'm happy today to have the opportunity to briefly update you on where we are currently relative to fall 2022. Our goal for total new freshman enrollment is ambitious. In order to return to the freshman enrollment of fall 2020, we would need to enroll this fall 3,075 freshmen. To achieve that goal, we'll require an increase in the freshman class of 12.3% over last fall. That is an ambitious, extraordinarily ambitious goal, uh, and we're all working hard to get to that number. Uh, have been working hard, frankly, since, what, Deb, September, <coughs> August, and are continuing to work on that this summer. So far this summer, we've completed our first six freshman custom sessions, and the numbers are very strong. Last year, we averaged 172 freshman students Per custom session. So far this summer, we're averaging 190 students per session. And historically, I think customs attendance has been the best indicator of what our fall uh, freshman class is going to look like. So we're, we're uh, happy about that. If that trend continues, we'll be on track for a freshman class of about 3,000 students. New transfer numbers continue to reflect the reduction in enrollments experienced by the community colleges since 2019. Uh, however, we're pleased that our transfer customs numbers are somewhat stronger than we would had anticipated. During the first four custom sessions for transfer students, we've worked with 824 transfer students as compared with 843 last year. So that's a decrease of just 2.2%, uh, which is much better than projected given the, the community college numbers. Good news in retention. Retention of our current students is up in almost every category of students who will be returning to us this fall. This is a very a positive sign. Dual enrollments are currently holding even to last year, uh, although dual enrollment often the, the big action will take place later in the summer, so we expect those numbers to increase as we get closer to the opening of high schools 
in August. A major focus area as we continue our summer work will be in the graduate college where we're seeing declines in both new graduate students and returning graduate students. Additionally, we have a number of new initiatives underway in every enrollment area to drive numbers for August. Our admissions office will be working with marketing and communications to roll out communication to students who are admitted for fall but who have not yet registered for customs and who have sufficient federal aid, scholarship aid, and HOPE aid to essentially cover all or most of their tuition and fees. So these are students who are a ripe target. They've been admitted, they've got money available, now we need to seal the deal. There are currently 137 freshmen who have not registered for customs but who have sufficient federal grants and HOPE money to completely pay their tuition and fees. So we're going to heavily work with them to encourage them to enroll now while they can essentially attend for free uh, this fall. There are currently 147 additional students who have one of our guaranteed scholarships and a HOPE scholarship, which brings them within $600 of completely paying their tuition and fees. So we're also considering a similar program to target incoming transfer students who receive both the HOPE and our MTSU transfer scholarship. Trustees Vice President St Sells and her staff, along with the deans, department chairs, and academic advisors are working hard every day to recruit and enroll students. So, Mr. Chairman, thank you for allowing me to share this information with you, and we'll continue to update you regularly. Concludes my report. Thank you, Mark. I saw um, an email this morning from SCORE, which is a nonprofit that's trying to advance every part of academics, and it was it's alarming number, Daryl, but going to college rate, now how that's, what that's defined as, but going to college rate in, was that Tennessee or Nashville? Tennessee is the figure I saw is nine per, off 9% in the last two years. And I think it's interesting since most of our huge part of our students are in state, uh, we're actually probably getting a bigger percentage of children that are going to school in a challenging time. So it's, uh, it's worth noting that perhaps with COVID waning, that will, uh, that'll, even make our numbers look better. It's a privilege to be uh, your chairman, and I enjoy the service, and hope we've changed some lives in the last quarter and will in the next year, and this meeting's adjourned. Let the record reflect, 38. It's the quickest one ever. That'll cut Pete's uh, long distance. All your comments. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Do you want to take this?